Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another WIS technology tutorial. Um, if you are watching this, it's likely that you've seen a tweet or a, an email or a Google Plus note regarding a new community uh, in Google Plus uh, that is dedicated to talking about curriculum mapping with Google Apps. And on that occasion, I decided it's probably best to share with you the latest iteration of what we have going on here at Washington International School in DC because a lot's changed since I first began this journey um, but much is still the same so this is merely intended to give you a look and feel of what to expect with this conversation um, where we may go with it perhaps it'll prompt you to ask some questions um, maybe wonder about how certain things were accomplished in this, um, but that's all good stuff. So our map literally consists of a Google site and a bunch of awesome tables. Um, there are three pieces to, to our map. We have course descriptions, we have unit templates, and then we have outcomes that are linked to those units. Um, and I think the most interesting piece to start with are the actual units. So the units are actually Google Doc templates that are distributed through a Google form. And all of those units are owned by our, in, our institutional account. So what this means is that as teachers come and go, um, the curriculum remains on campus. Um, they're certainly welcome to uh, make copies of those Google Docs. Um, but the, the actual curriculum is a sort of living and breathing uh, uh, entity of the school. And what's great about this is it's connecting two spreadsheets. So I have one spreadsheet that is essentially using a script to look into one specific drive folder for Google Documents. And then the other one is the, the sheet that is made throughout the autocrat distribution of the template. And a lot of this may sound very confusing, uh, but in both of those sheets, uh, the document ID is in those spreadsheets. So I can use that information to align um, the spreadsheets into one large table that can then be filtered in what's called an awesome table, which is what you're looking at right here. And this awesome table lets you um, filter your units by keywords or key, st key strings, I guess you would call them, by editors. In this case, this would be by specific teachers. So you can filter by multiple teachers if you were looking for um, the units by just a couple of teachers here. I hope they don't teach any in common units, but you can filter by uh, multiple teachers as well. Um, you can filter by when things were last updated. So uh, it's nice to see that today we're April 28th and we have teachers who have touched their curriculum just yesterday. So, uh, and that's kind of the goal here that this is, this is kind of interacted with throughout the entire year. Um, we're still working on what to use this description field for. Um, my plan is to sort of use this to steer the vertical and horizontal alignments of the curriculum. This information is pulled from the metadata of a Google Doc. Um, so many people aren't really familiar with where that is stored, but if you look in Google Drive under the details panel of a specific file, you have a place you can attribute some metadata to that document. And awesome tables will, this file cabinet view will automatically pull that in. So my thought is to include kind of codes, maybe H to represent horizontal, and then a specific pattern of words or so on and so forth to articulate the curriculum horizontally and vertically. So I can also narrow by subject area, grade level. Um, we have an eight day cycle system here, so I can hone in at the middle of the year if I'm curious about which units are taking place between cycles like 11 and 12. Um, I can also just go to a specific course, and if I wanna look at all of the units that are being populated in a specific course, and I can also filter by, I have this teacher column, um, which is much the same as this editor column yet. So this may 
end up going away eventually. And again, this is just, it's a work in progress. It's not a, not a completed uh, piece of work and it never meant to be totally finished. Um, so those are the units. Um, the course descriptions are distributed in much the same way. Um, and again, these are more of sort of like the public facing view of, of these courses, like the overall um, kind of the back to school night handout, like what, what happens in this course. So, and outcomes, um, I've been leveraging uh, Google Sheets to sort of uh, create charts and automatically count things. So if you have developed your own standards or are creating standards of your own, you can actually use a Google form to submit those outcomes and link them to a specific unit. And then you can go back and edit them um, in an awesome table. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, under the reports, I can get a sense of, you know, what stand, what, uh, how many units we have. So we're now up to 395 units uh, in our map. And again, some of these just might be empty templates that have been requested, um, but for the most part, um, they have been at least begun. So I can see the distributions over grade level, over subject area, and I can even hone in on specific departments. So this is again our humanities department, and and again this information here might not be accurate yet because we haven't really done a full-on uh, sort of thinking about our outcomes and their units using this tool yet. So I've just been merely getting the data ready to make it work. Um, so, but it gives you kind of a sense of th the types of visuals uh, you can produce using this system. Um, you can also upload things to a Google Calendar. So uh, this is one embedded Google Calendar that has all of the units happening at the same time. And again, I haven't set this up to automatically upload the units. So I, I have to go back and to the, the spreadsheets and push them out. Um, but again, this is merely giving you a sense of what you can do um, with these. And I've also gone to subject specific calendars because putting it all on one can be a little bit overwhelming so if you're just curious about a specific subject and the the units that are happening in the year you can do that this is merely the form that uh, teachers would fill out to grab one of those templates um, and it's delivered to them via autocrat um, i built a full text search web app um, and this is actually connected to the Google Drive folder containing all of uh, the curriculum units and this is beneficial if you're looking for keywords that are not in the title of a document so say I'm interested in teachers who are using Twitter in a unit I could search for Twitter right we're not gonna have any unit called Twitter uh, but I could search and it's gonna find all of the units where Twitter is mentioned, um, or maybe I'm interested in thinking routines. Um, again, I could search and find all of the units where uh, thinking routines are explicitly mentioned in the curriculum unit. So that's, that's beneficial. And I've also posted a how-to guide on how to do this into the Google Plus uh, community. Um, and then some other things, I, I just added the submit a change request. And this is merely for my own purposes of getting feedback from the faculty and then I can store it in the same place and have a spreadsheet of the changes that I need to make. But uh, the more I develop this, the less I need to actually change because it's, it's kind of a dynamic feature where teachers are empowered to make changes on their own. So for example, the names of the units are linked to the names of the Google Docs. So if the name of the Google Doc changes, the name of the unit changes. I don't have to manually manage a spreadsheet on the back end. And then we have kind of a list of terms that we uh, are, have agreed upon in using and defining certain things. Um, so this way, when we do keyword searches, we're, we're sure to kind of get the data back uh, that we want. And then this is just a reference table of when the actual cycles are taking place. Um, so you can kind of, you can be in the ballpark 
Um, you'll know, we'll say I'm doing this in January, but I don't know what cycle it is. I can say, oh yeah, okay, cycle 10. I think I'm gonna do this unit around cycle 10. So the goal here is not to be specific, but sort of approximate when this unit will be happening in the school year. So this is just an overview, uh, the latest walkthrough to kind of kick off the launch of this uh, Google Apps and, and curriculum mapping community. And thanks for watching. Bye.